Welcome to Tanan's classroom friends. In today's class we are going to see about the physical divisions of India and the rivers of India. Under physical divisions of India we will learn about mountains, deserts, plains and plateaus. So the mountains are identified in the color of dark brown, desert in yellow, plain green and plateau light brown. So let us see about the each feature, uh, physical features of India. First we are going to see about the Himalayas. The, it covers the northernmost part of India from the Jammu, Jammu, Jammu and Kashmir from the Arunachal Pradesh and some northeastern states. Houses here have sloping roofs so that snow can slide off easily. During cold months, people eat heat generating spices such as cloves, black pepper and chilies. In the eastern Himalayas, people eat chapati and roti whereas in the western Himalayas, people eat cooked rice. The higher you climb, the colder it gets. It means that how much higher you climb, the altitude decreases. So people here wear wool fur clothes as it is very cool here and it, and it is covered with ice and snow throughout the year. The common occupations here are agriculture, handicrafts, carpet weaving, um, tea cultivation and animal breeding. Now we are going to see about the Deccan Plateau. It covers the northern, it, it covers the states of Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh and Maharashtra. The mountain ranges coexist with the flat land and the seasonal rivers jostle with the dry rocky land and the sparse crop coexist with dense forests. Sail along the pristine waters of the Godavari, Maha, Mahanadi, Krishna and Kaveri. So the mountain ranges that flank the plateau are the western girls and the eastern girls. Eat uh, the, the crops that are grown here are rice and dragi. Enjoy Italy and dosa in Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh. Busy Balabar in Karnataka and Vada Pav in Maharashtra. To the cotton plantation. It is one of the few of the crop grown in the dry rocky soil beside sugar cane. Explore the moisturous mines of the Deccan. Rich in minerals, coal and iron, the area provides a livelihood for a large community of miners. Agriculture is also a major occupation here. Now we are going to see about the third feature known as the indo gangetic Plains or the football of India. So we already learned in the last, uh, last lesson in the social studies the plains of broad nearly flat stretches of land. So now we are going to see about the life in the indo gangetic plain. So the, yeah, the rivers that originate from Himalayas are Ganga, Yamuna, Satlaj and Brahmaputra. Along the river banks we will found some flourishing farmlands. The rivers deposit some the deposit of uh, rich soil rich uh, fertile soil rich in minerals. This fertile soil is ideal for growing crops like wheat, rice, pulses, sorghum, oil seeds, and sugar cane. So the plains are known as the food bowl of India. So the people here wear saris, salwar kameez, and dotis. They eat variety of dishes like chapati, rice. And dal. The plains are very populous and a large number of people settle here. Fertile soil rich, uh, fertile soil, plenty of water and well and easy travel due to well connected roads and railways. So, uh, so the the main occupation here are agriculture. People also work in sugar, cotton, jute, paper, and textile and leather industry. So now we are going to see about the fourth feature known as the Thar Desert or the Great Indian Desert. The, it is located in the it is the India famous desert and it is located in the Rajasthan and extends to the parts of Gujarat, Haryana, Punjab and Pakistan. So a 
and area surrounding and water source is known as uh, uh, an area that is vegetation surrounding and water source is known as an oasis. Camels drink a lot when they found an oasis. So they can survive several days without food or water because its body is made in such a way that it can store water in its humps. So the people here love, love to wear beautiful, colorful, uh, bright, colorful dresses, and and they like and they love to uh, dance beautiful folk dances. It is very very hot in the Thar Desert for many months of the year. It gets freezing cold in the night during winter. We all we all know that the camel is the ship of the desert. Rajasthani people loves to wear clothes and make make leather goods jewelry and dyed cloth most of the people here are farmers they cultivate with little water but also there are some crops like bajra johar til gram and barley very few crops grow, grow grow here most of these crops do not need much water the Thar desert is also plain as it, it, it does not have a major variation in its height there are also some cold deserts too, like the Gobi Desert in Asia, which means in Mongolia. Antarctica is the largest cold desert on Earth. The Himalaya is extensively mentioned in the Hindu epics and texts like the Mahabharata and Ramayana. Do you know that the Thar Desert is also, uh, is also the densely populated desert in the world? So now we are going to see going we know we are going to see about the next topic the rivers of india so then so a number of large and small rivers flow across india they make india beautiful these rivers mostly pro, more, play an important role in the lives of people in india most of the major cities are located along the river banks the dams are located built near the river to check the flow of water. So, so the people do occupation depending on the rivers like doing agriculture and fishing. Most of the rivers in India flow into the Bay of Bengal. They are known as the East Flowing Rivers. But few rivers like the Narmada, Tapi, Sabamadi and Mahi flow into the Arabian Sea which are known as the best flowing rivers. And some rivers just uh, drain into the lakes and ponds inland. The major rivers in India are originated from three main sources. They are the Himalayas in the northern India, Western Rivers in the Western India, Vindhya Range in the South Vindhya Range and Sarpura Range and the Chota Nambur Plateau in the central India. So now we are going to see about what is perennial rivers and non-perennial rivers. The rivers that originate from the Himalayas have a continuous flow of water throughout the year. The melting glaciers provide a constant flow of water known as perennial rivers or, non, uh, or permanent rivers. So, 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 so some examples of uh, perennial rivers are Ganga, Yamuna, Brahmaputra, and Indus. So, the, so these rivers will do not dry up until there is an extreme drought throughout the year. The, the Ganga is the longest river on earth. Unlike these perennial rivers, there are some rivers that does not have a continuous flow of water throughout the year. They are known as non-perennial rivers. These rivers are originated from, originated from a plateau region um, and they do not receive enough water so they cannot flow continuously throughout the year. These rivers flow only in the rainy season and not in the summer season when, when there is no rain. These rivers are found only in the when only in the place where uh, where we can found an uncertain monsoon. Some of the names of some non-perennial rivers are are Kaveri, Krishna, and Godavari. So the both the perennial 
rivers and non perennial rivers play an important role in the lives of people of india they provide drinking water electricity transportation and occupation for the peoples of uh, for the people all over the country okay friends so in the today's class we learned about two topics which are the physical divisions of india and the rivers of india and the physical divisions of india we learned about what is himalaya deccan plateau indo gangetic plains and thar desert and under rivers of india we learned about perennial rivers non perennial rivers and from where they are originated thank you friends bye hope you like it see you in the next class